Hello to everybody. Welcome back to yet another episode of our series Power People. In this episode, we'll be talking to the versatile singer Leslie Lewis, who will be in conversation with our executive editor Ruhel Amin. Do share your comments, views at the end of this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our website loudest.in for all the music business updates. All right. So my first question to you is: uh, uh, We recently saw you come back. Uh, with a new album after a gap and that too uh, when uh, a lot of your contemporaries you know they have uh, maybe um, uh, kind of uh, agreed that they are not coming back and uh, releasing a new album in this age when the music has completely got redefined it's not the way pure music lovers would see it what was the idea behind the second term as i call it a new journey that you have started Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is a new journey uh, because if you notice through the '90s, I have created uh, music for everybody, for all the artists that I've worked with, from you know Pari who met to Janam Samjhakaro to Yaro Dosti to Pal to Colonial Cousins. I've always worked with other people, created the music for them, created their their you know star power, as you might call it, from my side. But I did no music for Leslie Lewis. So since I was seventeen, eighteen, I've I've been an independent artist from then. But because of, you know, the independent scene wasn't really there. You know, I started composing for other people. What happened? That became how you know me from the nineties. But I said, hey, it's time for me to do my own music, and uh, you know, and redefine and let people know that they can be Hindi in another form besides what they've been hearing. So when I started indie pop, it was Pari who made. and that was so different that nobody even understood pari who metal it got released in 91 january and maybe by 93 people were kind of getting the hang of pari who me so you know new music takes a little time to to kind of appeal so so like uh, having started all that music it, it but it was always for another artist even yaro dosti pal it was me introducing kk uh, you know band of boys whatever it was i was doing music creating the songs for other people and uh i decided that i need to do songs where i am the independent artist so i've released my new album it, all the songs are composed by me all the songs are written by me all the songs are sung by me they're recorded mixed i mean i'm i'm that independent as you get and uh, it's called the white album and it's got six absolutely mm-hmm. romantic songs uh and like you said everybody has been doing the same you know doing the same genre that they've been doing for a long time and um, for me i just feel that nobody's even heard this genre of mine because i am the artist and i am the singer and you haven't experienced me yet right fresh right. so that's that's a very interesting take you know when uh, you say that you're trying to make music for yourself you this is the this is the time when you are trying to express your own uh, you know thoughts through music earlier you were doing it for someone else yes that's of course of course very intense here. but wh- what about the name white music it sounds a little unique yeah it's called the white album and it's called the white album because you need to come to your white state before you listen to it so like i said the white album is a, is six romantic songs and in today's time it's not romantic songs as per today to today's time it's six classic romance if you hear them they are not your regular dichak right. type so if you suddenly hear it you will say kya is samajh bhi nahi aa raha kuch what is this too soft something you keep quiet come to your white state drop all your other colors apne jo rang hai usko uda do come to your kora state and that's when you go when the songs are going to speak to you all the six will talk to you right. forget but i guarantee you at that state when they talk to you you are going to find two favorites not one but two in there each right. one because i say gano ki nayi pehchan is gone back to songs why do we like the songs of the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and the lagja galays and the uh, o oh sanams and what because they are good songs you know you want to sing it that's what the white mm-hmm. album is about and i think right. that's why so i like white- to you right so the white album is all about uh, kind of un, uh, undoing your own versions of 
what you perceive music to be, be in the pure state, and then let it let it kind of get over you, right? Yeah, you you have to come to a pure state. आपको एकदम अपने आप को शांत करना है. Come to your when you're right. really chilled. That's the time to listen to the White Album, and then right. you're going to find two favorites. Right. You know, I want to ask you uh, during uh, the '90s, especially uh, early 2000, to some extent, we saw the rise of indie pop in a very big way. Right. Especially when you were uh, there. I mean, uh, it used to be a mainstream genre, but yeah. then gradually it faded out, and again we went back to uh, the 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 so-called uh, Bollywood music being yeah. seen as the only genre that is there. So, so what led to the decline of indie pop the, the, from the place it was, where it was in the early uh, and the mid '90s to the early 2000s? What led to it, according to you? Well, if you really look at it seriously, the Mai Bab of indie pop has always been MTV and Channel V, and they are the people who supported the alternate music, which was independent music at that point, and so the other record labels. Magna Sound probably was one of the early ones to start it, and the other record labels jumped on the bandwagon because there was money to be made. And these two channels were creating a completely youth uh, focus. So when all this started happening, if you notice, every lot of the youth in the '90s started kind of going towards this kind of music, and so the regular Bollywood, the the you know what was Bollywood at that time, started. saying hey apne fans wahan ja rahe hain you know why isn't anybody looking at these artists why are they looking at these unknown people these kids these whoever they are and somehow when mtv and channel v shut down that was really the end of uh, the real indie pop as as we knew it and it went back into the traditional system which was which is bollywood nothing wrong with that but um, you know it went back to square one so uh do we see uh, uh the indie uh, pop the in, in the indian genre coming back uh, beyond the again i would go to the bollywood platform do we see that happening our music labels looking at it uh, what is the landscape like uh, if you could share some of the insights with us so today's got a new name uh, it's not a very new name it's called independent music so if you listen to pari hu mai it was independent music at that time you know what i'm saying but it wasn't if you if you listen to yaro dosti it was independent music at that time pal was an independent colonial cousins independent band of boys independent but it was the name was indie pop today they brought the word in independent and then all the other artists who are not in bollywood are exactly the same thing it's just that they don't have the support of an mtv or any tv channel or any particular uh, on online streaming channel or something they're supporting them primarily like a spotify all the streaming channels are supporting music across the across the space so it's not about only independent and not they've got their different genres but it's not about only this or nothing so there's no specialized Uh, so everybody who's in the independent zone today is like the new indie pop of of India. Right. Right. And so I'm going to ask. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Please, yeah, yeah, please no, carry on. Carry on. Yeah. So my question is that we have the proliferation of platforms. We have digital. We have labels. We have television. We have film industry. Whole lot of things. Uh, are there more opportunities for independent artists? to monetize uh, their the music than ever before i think monetization is really ruled by the big babies you know from before they they've always uh, monetized it whether it was uh, in the early 60s 70s 80s 90s so record labels are really the monetizing spot uh, streaming became a new space and then that's become some sort of monetizing but if you see the kind of monetization the artist really gets is no way even close so when you say monetization it's the word monetization but what real money are you getting is really no way i mean look at an artist independently has to record compose record find a composer find a, a lyric writer 
go to the studio, record the whole thing. Then once it's all done, say, abhi iska video banana hai. Find a, a DOP, find a director, find whatever, make it, shoot it, edit it. That's a lot of money for an independent artist to put down. So what kind, and then after that, you need to promote it. That's the biggest. And that's where all the money. So one independent artist, when he supports himself with that kind of money for one song, one single, how much money do you think really think he's going to get back? And what happens when he does the second and the third? You're just eating into his bank account. So in context to that only, so I would like to ask you that if there's anything uh, you want to change in the music industry, what it be? Matlab, what change you want in this generation's music? I've already done it. <laughs> it's called the White Album. Yeah. That's the, change, the change is it's gone back to songs. Uh, so I call it Gano Ki Nahi Pechan. It's gone back to songs that you can hum, you can sing. And uh, if you play any of those six songs on radio, and if I play you any of those six songs, and I ask you, you have sound, aisa gana, aapne radio pe kabhi suna hai, you're going to say no. And that means it's not in Bollywood. It's not anywhere. It's the most independent sounding sound today. So if, if you really look at it, the White Album is, in my opinion, a fresh new sound in the Indian scene. It's organic. It's live. It's all one take. Start to finish. Like the old days used to happen. Like Lataji would sing and we'd all be playing uh, start to finish. Ho gaya recording. Khatam. That's it. That's the recording. And that's how the White Album was done. So it's back to organic music. It's back to organic songs. And I think it's it's a great platform for a new uh, you know way of looking at Hindi music. I'm not saying it's better or worse than anybody. I'm just saying it's so different from everything else. And I don't need to tell you this in English. I, I'm saying press play and then be honest to yourself. So tell me any artist you want to collaborate, any Gen Z artist in today's time, any. any right, of now, right now, Leslie Lewis is the Gen Z artist. Oh. That's, That's the one I'm collaborating with because the residues of the 90s. That's the new upcoming. New yeah, so, so the old guy is coming in with his experience and whatever, and he's collaborating with the young guy who wants to do his own music. And the old guy is producing this young guy, <laughs> and I'm collaborating with myself. And if you notice, uh, the, the first single from the White Album came straight at number one across all radio stations. I have the H, they sent me an HX certificate. The second week, they sent me another certificate saying it has maintained itself at number one. The second song, Pasa Ona, came in at number three. And the third song, uh, Jannat Ki Raat, has come in at number six. And I've, they've sent me the certificates of all this, which is across all radio stations in India. Now, my point is, there is no record label there is no nobody, many bus. I've just put the songs out and somehow the songs are talking to the people and it's gathering its own momentum. Uh, yesterday, I released the fourth song. I, I previewed the fourth song. Uh, and I did the preview at 7 p.m. In a club, in a pub. Nobody comes at 7 p.m. 7 to 9 was the slot. It was house full, jam-packed. And the response to all this new music is amazing. So I know the music is talking. Uh, you know, Pari Hume talks to people. You don't have to tell them, Iska aisa rhythm hai, aisa. just play it. And you like it. But you need to play it enough. So because there is no MTV and there's no Channel V and there's nobody here right now, you have to be your own record label and you have to support it in your own way. And it's going to take longer probably. But guaranteed everyone across the board who has heard these songs can put a finger on and I love it on the first listen. I don't need to hear it. Play it again for me. I, I, let me hear it again. No. Press play and there is definitely, you know, love right there. Because the songs are working. It's not me. It's not me, the singer. It's not me, the arts. Just songs. And I think people need to go back to songs. And that's missing from 2020. If you see 2020 to 2010, it was kind of declining. 2010 to 2020, it's kind of like 
you know, everybody's remixing everything. They're doing mashups. They're doing all kinds of things. I'm saying, where are the songs? Why are you playing, singing old songs? Sing new songs that sound as good as the old songs, that make you feel as good as the old songs. And I think that's what the White Album has achieved and have three songs already a hit. I mean, out of a song of six, six songs, an album of six songs. I mean, certified hit. What can I ask for? I mean, God is good. I mean, the music is talking. And I think that's that's really the magic, which is the new space in, in, in the Indian music scene, I feel, today. So, sir, you have seen it all. You have been in the industry for 30 years now. Right. So, so far, so good. How was your journey? So far, so good? My journey has been fantastic because as a young artist, I was 16, 17. I was playing in a, uh, you know, in a, street band in Mumbai I used to play on the road for Ganpati festivals and you know literally on the road from there to playing with Louis Banks and uh, and then R.D. Burman, Lakshmikant Pyarala you know I've just and then starting my own kind of jingle company and doing all do 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 the mango fruity and all those jingles that everybody knows now and then you know I've done practically every big brand in this country I've done music for practically everyone and then to start your own kind of music, which became Pari Hu Man, Jaran Samjha Karo, and it became independent music. And then start your own band as Colonial Cousins. And then you get world acclaim and you got your Billboard Awards, Las Vegas, and you get your MTV Awards in New York. And you're the only Indian artist to perform on the original MTV Unplugged in London. You're the only Indian band. It's been a great journey. And then they come to you and say, hey, sir, can you do Coke Studio for us? And we'd like you to present Coke Studio to India. And then you, you introduce India to Coke Studio. So, you're just on that journey of a road. After Coke Studio, you know, 2011, 12, like I said, the songs have been slowly missing and everything's kind of getting you more into a marketing space. You've got to be a good marketing guy to get your song up there. doesn't matter if you can sing well. doesn't matter, matter if you're a good artist. I can get you and I can make you a star. I think that's what the marketing machine has proven. And it's a good thing and it's a bad thing, depending which side you look at it. But I'm just saying that, bhai, if you really want something to, you want to take something back with you, it's called to have a song. And that's why I came out with the White Album. And um, because the artist called Leslie Lewis is finally being born <laughs> and doing his own thing. And the kind of love that I'm getting for these songs, uh, not just by people listening to it and saying I love it, actually getting an air check certificate for the first, second, third single, all so something is happening and somewhere you know that whatever I, I, I live for, the music and I live for, is still very valid. It's about the music. It's not about the artist. It's not about the, you know, you need a, any great artist needs a great song. Without a great song, the artist, you know, the best voices in the world can't sing unless they have a good song. Why do you listen? I mean, Lataji is amazing. But why do you listen to 100 songs out of 1000 songs? That 900 songs has the same angelic voice of this country. Why don't you listen to those? No. Why? Because it's the composition and it's the song. And I think maybe yeah. that's a, that's maybe a strong point. That's why you've got a Pari Yume, Janan Sanjagaru, Yara Dosti, Pal, you know, Kai Zala. I've been composing songs for so many artists. So me, the composer, that same composer is now composing for this young artist called Leslie Lewis. And that's the collaboration. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So, any upcoming projects lined up? What's well, right. future? My future has oh. just begun. Yeah, so, I like I said, that. the white album is out. Yeah, it's three songs and have been album. released. Three songs have been released. They are all certified hits. Fourth one got released yesterday. Two more songs left somewhere down the line, and then it, it's not going to stop because you're going to see the other side of me. Yeh to both romantic side aapne dekha hai. It has just started. Upper dik hai na mujhe. <laughs> you haven't got slapped by me yet. So that's, you know, I have a nice guy, a sweet guy on this album. But there's so much more music I do beyond just romantic music. But this is just, like I said, this is a start. So you're going to see Leslie Lewis like you've never seen him, you know, from when he was 18 years old. So can you sing one of your favorite, favorite from your album, the latest album, the white album? Can you sing? Okay, so I, I, I wouldn't suggest singing anything from there. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because you need to listen to it in a very chilled out zone. Mm -hmm. One. Secondly, nobody even knows the songs. They're not, you know, they're not your what's playing. Uh, Only know. two, three lines. Only two. Let, let me sing you something else. Uh, yeah, something uh, else. So I'll, let me sing maybe. Uh, okay, so here's a song 
which was indie pop in those days and today it's called independent music or whatever it's the same genre and this is a song called yaro dosti बड़ी ये ना हो तो क्या फिर बोलो ये जिंदगी ही है एंड आई गारंटी यू इफ यू लिसन टू आई थिंक इट इज माय फेवरेट सॉन्ग सो फार वाओ बट आई आई गारंटी यू इफ यू गो एंड लिसन टू द व्हाइट एल्बम यू आर गोइंग टू फील यू आर गोइंग टू फील ये वैसा ही टाइप का गाना है इफ आई लव यारो दोस्ती आई एम गोइंग टू लव वन ऑफ दोस सॉन्ग्स इन दैट बिकॉज़ इट्स गॉट द सेम मैजिक वाइब यस So it was great it was our pleasure for having you here on loudest for the first time i guess you have yes, you having you here yep. so thank you so much for your time pleasure and we'd uh, love to see you again on this platform yeah. thank you look forward thank you thank you bye ojeski bye take care